Hello and welcome to the JK Feather Ranch channel. Let's keep this short because it's hot and I want to close this door. Gas is $6 a gallon, our truck gets 20 miles per gallon on a good day, and we have an electric car and a trailer hitch. Let's make that happen. The hitch we're going to be using is this Eco Hitch made by Torquelift from eTrailer.com. It was the most expensive option, but it also has the highest rating at 2,000 pounds of tow capacity and 300 pounds of tongue weight. It actually goes behind the bumper cover and bolts behind the crash bar. So let's get started putting it on. The first thing you'll want to do is remove these two screws under the hatch and three screws behind the wheel. Pull out the first three clips holding on this trim piece to access the screw underneath. Remove the screw on the bottom behind the wheel and the two push pins securing the bumper. Once you've removed the fasteners from both sides, gently pry up the clips holding the bumper to the body. and lower the bumper. Before removing it completely, unhook this wiring connector and set the bumper aside. The hitch mounts behind the crash bar, so remove the three 15 millimeter nuts on each side. Don't forget to pry out these clips before removing the crash bar, lifting the hitch into place, and reinstalling the crash bar. I used a single nut to hold it in place while applying Loctite to the threads, and then reinstalled the nuts. There's a torque spec somewhere, but the instructions fell out of the box during shipping. I then test fit the bumper. Contorted myself underneath the car to mark where it needed to be cut. And trimmed a hole for the hitch to fit through. Reinstall these wiring clips, lift the bumper back into place, and it should look something like this. Don't forget to reconnect these wires and give everything a good smacking to seat the clips. Reinstall this screw and this trim piece and reverse the rest of the steps you did to remove the bumper. Now we'll move on to the wiring, which is the part that most of these videos don't show. First, disconnect the 12 volt battery. And take everything out of the cargo area. Pry off this trim piece.
being careful not to break the clips. Pop off this cover and remove the screw. And remove the upper trim piece. It can't be removed completely, but it slides down over the seat belt. If you have a false floor, you'll need to remove the bracket on this side and remove the three clips holding the side panel. The lighting controller is behind the panel. I'll be using this Takancha inductive wiring kit, which only requires splicing a single wire to work. Magnetic pickups read the signals from the other wires without damage. I strongly dislike vampire taps, so I'll be using this posi tap to hook up the power. One end goes over the wire you want to tap, and the other screws down to make a tight connection. The top piece unscrews, fits over a stripped wire, and screws back into place. forming a tight connection. The white wire is the ground, so we'll remove this nut, slip it over the stud, and tighten it back down. Unhook this connector, and carefully cut back some of the sheathing around the wires. Locate the yellow and white wire and install the clamp marked stop. Attach the clamp marked tail to the brown and gray wire. The turn signals are accessed from further back. It's a pain to film and an even bigger pain to work on, but I'll do my best. I'll link a PDF from ChevyBolt.org in the description as well. You will again need to cut back some of the sheathing. Locate the blue and white wire and install the clamp for the left turn signal. The right turn signal goes on the blue and purple wire, and yes, this part is as frustrating as it looks. With everything hooked up, I mounted the controller box on this stud here, did an acceptable job of shoving the wires back into place, and reinstalled the side trim panel. I added some split loom to protect the wire where it goes through the body. And drilled a hole big enough for the flat connector to fit through while my wife spastically filed down the rough edges. I added another piece of split loom and some silicone tape just to overdo things. Normally you'd use a pre-made rubber grommet for this, but my wife wanted a reason to use her 3D pen and it saved me a trip to the hardware store. Once we were done, we made sure to give it the old wiggle test. Let's do the wiggle test on camera. Not coming out. With a bit of finesse, the connector fit through first, and the loom followed almost perfectly. That's thick. That's what she said. 
I did have to trim a bit of girth from the wiring. For the last panel to snap back into place. I originally zip tied the connector here, but I really didn't feel comfortable with that, so I ended up converting to a 7 pin and installing it through the bumper instead. And that's how you install a trailer hitch on a Chevy Bolt. Now you might notice if you look closely at the bumper that there's one thing we did that we didn't show in this video. Uh, it is important, especially because we plan on towing our teardrop with this, and that's going to be the subject of our next video, so stay tuned to this channel. If you found this information useful, uh, don't forget to like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks for watching!